Uh, so basically, yeah, there's a nice roaring fire. There's lots of uh, uh, um, beautiful pictures in there with strange um, uh, 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 alien objects which have appeared in them. Uh, and you get to explore uh, lots of artifacts that the Doctor's picked up over the years. Uh, so there's his old gramophone uh, uh, player from uh, the Eighth Doctor, which the Eighth Doctor used to uh, carry around. Um, there's a cricket ball that the Fifth Doctor used to always have in his pocket. Uh, and there's uh, the Fourth Doctor's scarf. Uh, and all of these things will, uh, in the future, enable us to tie into the archive, which we're also going to be... Uh, sort of developing the release of and trying to sort of tie into these games things so you can go deeper into some of the myth mythology and history of, of Doctor Who. Um, so, um, so in order to actually have a more detailed look around that, you'll have to go and download it yourselves uh, tomorrow. Um, but I will uh, also show you how it ends, because I'm mean, um, but also because uh, it might give you a slight clue as to uh, what episode four uh, will be as well. No trouble this time. Where's the fun in that? Oh, hang on. Uh, I know just the place you love. It's very quiet, peaceful, and perfectly safe. Here we are, London after the great flood of the 23rd century. Okay, uh, so look, thanks for uh, giving me your time and attention this afternoon and for giving me the opportunity to tell that story. Um, I've got to say, it's probably, uh, uh, while standing up here at the end of a day when I've seen uh, you know, some fantastic speakers, some fantastic propositions, some fantastic products, you know, I know, and I'm not standing up here saying we've done the most revolutionary game ever, but what I do think we've done is, uh, certainly from the BBC point of view, managed to marry those worlds of games and TV better than we've ever achieved before. I'm not saying we've cracked it yet, but I think we may have given an indication to both sides that there's more to come, there's more to be done there, uh, and there's very exciting projects in the future. It's probably been the most exciting and rewarding project I've been involved with in my time in BBC TV. Uh, and I know that uh, everyone involved at BBC Wales, Sumo, Charles Cecil uh, have been uh, thoroughly uh, enjoying it as well. Uh, and I think that uh, the audience has as well. So um, thanks very much. Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, Ian, was it three companies um, were uh, pitched, or was it... Um... We whittled it down from about 14 yeah. to three that sort of produced a more detailed pitch. Yeah. And we, um, we gave them some development spending to... Uh, uh, we basically... Did, we, we felt we had to actually have some uh, game designs to look at, um, and um, so we actually gave each of them some development money to... Uh, to get up to that stage, and um, and then um, again a very a very exciting day. Stephen was involved, wasn't he? And um, uh, um, and Charles was involved, and uh, it was uh, Sumo who came in and really blew us away um, because actually that that Trafalgar Square scene, they'd realised that based on the development money we'd given them, maybe some of their own as well, and uh, they really seemed to. Um, uh, they really seem to understand the Doctor Who world, to really understand the, um, the characters, uh, the storylines, and it really came across in the work they've done. Okay, anybody else got a question? Um, gentleman there with the white shirt, let me shout at the front. Do you mind shouting? I'll repeat it again. How, how big are each of the episodes? How many hours of gameplay do you get? It's about, uh, it's about two hours uh, of gameplay in each one. Um, so, I mean, it depends how well you do it, how many times you get uh, killed and regenerated, etc. But um, about two hours. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Uh, Nicholas? You do understand the only fun I have left is making a group of 
we thought we might get another one of your jokes in, actually. But, uh. um, you talked about uh, commercialising it outside the UK. How do you see games as being on the vision to the public sector side versus on the more commercial side? And are you aiming to make all of the debt money back from the US stuff, or is it just kind of, um, sorry, the non-UK stuff, is it just kind of optimistic, or does it then snowball the BBT's ability to keep making more stuff? Yeah. Um, so, in, in, in deciding to do this, we decided to do it purely on a public service basis. It had to, as it were, wash its face from a public service point of view. If we were going to spend licence fee payers' money on it, uh, then it had to uh, fit with the purpose of the BBC, it had to be genuinely distinctive in the market, uh, it had to deliver value for money, it had to fit, you know, the way, we, the way we measure this kind of stuff in the BBC is we've got our public purposes and you know, does it deliver against one of those and so on. So we did a huge amount of work on all of that and basically justified the investment on that. We also looked incidentally at the market impact we might have uh, and whether we would be negatively impacting the games market in any way. And we judged that the segment of the market we were in, or it was judged by the people who did the work for us, um, meant that, and the size of the games market as a whole, meant that we wouldn't have uh, a negative market impact. Um, so in a way, the ex-UK um, angle was something that we wanted to get in from the start really, basically so that we could launch the game onto a, the global platform that is the internet and have it accessible in some way internationally. And we didn't quite get it there in time for episodes one and two. And that did mean that, you know, unfortunately a lot of the feedback from outside the UK was, well, I, I really like to see it, I'd love to see it, I can't review it, I can't talk about it, it wasn't on the blog sites, etc. This time, again, I'm going to be intrigued to see whether by making it available, albeit commercially internationally, we get a bit more um, sort of findability on the web by it being a bit more talked about and so on. Um, I don't know how it'll do commercially, um, but I'm intrigued to find out and to see whether there is this model of free license fee funded for UK license fee payers and then funded ex-UK. I should say as well, um, BBC Worldwide I think only uh, a day or so ago, um, announced um, that they are, uh, so BBC Worldwide, our commercial arm, are launching uh, a Wii game and a DS game uh, for Doctor Who. And they're platforms that I certainly don't judge at the moment are appropriate for BBC license fee uh, intervention, public service intervention. I think they're more traditionally paid for environments. I don't think the BBC does have its history of providing interactive services, participative services, as it does on the open web. Um, so um, there is a line to be drawn, um, and I think on this one we've got it right. Just to understand, episodes yeah. one and two were blocked. They weren't freely available everywhere, and now they're charging. That's people. right, they were, they were blocked. At all. They were blocked ex UK, yeah, so you couldn't get hold of them. And have you said how much you're going to charge outside the UK? Uh, Ian, do you know uh, what we're at? Sorry, it's Ian Tweedale is the, the guy who's given me all the answers, and I should have thrown forward to him earlier, because if you want to see the demo I was unable to give, he's giving one at 7 o'clock in here, is it, Ian? Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, yes. Yeah, they, they were um, uh, doing the first episode through the bundling of the others. Sorry. So, so they were doing the first episode through the bundling the others in, into a larger package, so um, obviously it's not an area that we were involved in directly, so I'm not absolutely sure. I think it's two or three dollars. Uh, it's around that area. Uh, it's, it's with IGN, the director general. Andy, do you want to say something? Yeah, just very quickly. Um, I just want to ask a straight question. Is it part of the BBC's policy to keep this development work in the UK? Um, no, uh, and there were ex UK companies in the pitching process. Um, that said, an, another, you know, a, a thing that I was strongly able to um, argue the public service case for was that we were uh, injecting sort of capital into the creative economy of the UK. It was, but it wasn't, we, we deliberately and very sort of rigidly made it not a criteria in selection of the company. We wanted the best ideas, the best production, the best people to work with, and we would have handled it. But it was definitely an additional string to the bow from a public service point of view that it was a UK company. There was someone down here who had a question. Yeah, sure. Do you want to? Uh, you mentioned the 
mentioned that one of your goals for the future is improving the process of working with developers. Do you have any plans on that? Yeah, so um, I talked a bit about this uh, sort of games API that we're developing, and um, part, part of that is to, is to you know, better standardise the way that to get games onto BBC Co UK uh, and the way that they operate on BBC Co UK. Um, because you know, I, I think it has been extremely painful for many uh, developers um, to uh, to work with us in the past. Because technically, BBC Co UK has you know uh, all sorts of features that are non-standard. Um, so we're trying to sort that out. Um, I should I should say as well, um, slightly related to the last question. Uh, my personal belief is um, there is a thriving, superb creative games industry out there in the market. Uh, so I don't necessarily think that games production is a skill or, or uh, that the BBC needs to build in-house. Um, and as a result, I see it. But I, I do think the BBC needs to be in this area. I think it's uh, an essential uh, way of delivering our public service mission for the future, of staying relevant. Uh, and I hope that that's uh, a good opportunity for people in this room uh, and, uh, and people in the rest of the industry. And I do hope that, um, I think we're doing some quite interesting work um, on this API and uh, on uh, looking at games on BBC Co UK as a bit more of a portfolio rather than, and each one learning from the rest rather than slightly sort of scattergun popping up all over the place. Uh, I think we're getting a bit more strategic. <laughs>